Hey folks, I just wanted to uh, show a quick little tutorial about um, when you're starting with Juice, um, something that a lot of people don't know how to use very well is uh, Git and GitHub, Bitbucket, uh, GitLab integration. Um, so I wanted to show a quick way to kind of uh, set, up, set up your project flow so that way um, you're only storing uh, the information you need in your repo and um, how to kind of configure your Juice projects so they're always ready to go in a very easy, uh, clean manner. So um, I'm going to demonstrate this on uh, Windows 10. Um, even I'm running it in a virtual machine on my iMac. Um, that's why this is uh, this is showing um, uh, Chrome on OS X. So. Uh, without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make uh, on your online host, you're going to want to make just like a regular repository. Um, so you'll first go like this. You'll say, I'm going to make a cool plugin. So my cool plugin. All right, create repository. All right. So now there's nothing in here. Um, and we have our uh, git remote URL. So now what we can do, um, we can copy this URL right here, copy that. Um, and now when we're over here, I have a folder already set up called programming and it's got my programming projects in it. So what I'm going to do is, um, this is going to be shown with the application source tree. Um, if I open source tree and, uh, Pardon, pardon the weight that it's going to take to open up. It takes a couple, a couple seconds. I'll chop that out. All right. So we go here. We go to clone. Um, type in the URL. Like that. Normally I can just do this. All right. So it's going to be clone, and we'll get to see the actual contents of it here real quick. Right, so this is going to clone. It's going to download. Uh, there shouldn't really be anything for it to download, which is the best part. All right, so totally empty. Now we've got, uh, in this folder, we have just an empty git. There's nothing in the repository at all. So what we can do now is we start up Projuicer and we create our project. And um, yeah, so after I've done that, I will, um, I will show you what I mean. All right, that took a super long time. That took like five minutes for that to compile. That was insane. All right, so we've got a uh, producer up and running. We have an empty folder with, um, uh, where is that folder? Oh, okay, yeah, so we've got an empty folder called My Cool Plugin uh, with just a Git repository in it. So what you'll do is you'll go to File, New Project, I'm just going to do a GUI application because it's the simplest thing you can make. Okay, GUI application. I'm going to save it in. Uh, I'm going to save it in that folder. My cool plugin. We'll call it uh, my cool plugin. All right, and we will create. Right now, if we look in this folder, um, oops, this went in the wrong place. Okay, so. I'm just going to move this real quick. So this is what we'll have. Um, now, if I go back here, you'll see that it's all of a sudden we have all these unstaged files that we, uh, it's trying to save, it's trying to upload. And when we actually build it, it's going to, you know, it's going to try to commit all these files to the Git repository, which is not what we want. So I'm going to get rid of these um, two folders here the builds folder and the juice library folder. And what we need to add is a git ignore file. All right, we'll use notepad. Okay, so first we'll do file save as. All right, we want this to go in our folder with our, um, with our stuff, programming, my cool plugin, file name, all files. So we'll go dot git ignore, save. Okay, there's our .git ignore file. Now inside this, what we want to do is um, uh, we want it to we want to tell Git that we're going to ignore anything in the builds folder and anything in the uh, Juice Library Codes folder. So we do 
two asterisks, then build like that. And the same thing here, juice library code. All right, and we'll save. So now we go over here, it's gonna refresh. You'll see that um, it's got the git ignore as a file that will possibly be tracked. It's got the juicer file, and then it's got our three source files. So we don't see, um, if I if I open uh, juicer and reopen that project, uh, where did that go? If I reopen this, okay. If I do um, save and open in IDE, oh, I have to reconfigure my juice path. Give me one second. Now, okay, so if I do save product and open an IDE, you'll see I get this builds and juice library col uh, code folder. Now, if I go back over here, it's gonna refresh. The git ignore is gonna take effect and it's not, those files will not show up here, which is great because, you know, every time you reopen your project um, or every time you resave your product in juicer, in ProJuicer, um, it's going to recreate the juice library code. It's going to recreate your builds. All right. So what we can do here is we can commit these files, um, stage all like that. All right. Now they've been added to the repo. Now we can uh, do our initial commit like this. So here's our message, Init initial commit of project. Push changes immediately to uh, the remote. All right. All right. So now it's currently pushing it to that uh, remote repository. All right. Now if I go back over here, uh, go to Chrome, I go back to source. Well, the commits, there's our first commit. If I look at our source, here's our uh, the source folder, the git ignore file, and then the juicer project. All right, so now, here we go. All right, so now if I look at the solution and let's see if I make some changes to this code. Let's see, my cool plugin source. Um, let me just go, uh, go here. Um, let me hide this output window. Let me just make a quick change um, set the color white. Let's set it to be blue. Uh, let's set it to be red because that's super easy. Um, uh, and then we'll save this. If we go back to source tree, it's going to refresh. It's going to see that this file was changed, All right? That's where the change happened right there. So we can just do a quick commit of that just to demonstrate what's going on. Um, changed text color. Uh, we need to tell it that we want to do that by staging the file. All right. Now we commit it. All right. Now uh, I'm going to close this. And just to show you what the benefit of this is, you'll see that um, we can close that. Um, if I go over back to here. I'm going to delete this folder and I'm going to reclone the repo. All right. All right, let's pretend I'm on my work computer um, and I've been working on this project at home. And now what I can do is I can open source tree. All right, and I'm gonna clone the remote repo. So let me switch over, get that URL one more time. Okay. Clone. Copy the URL, all right, back over in source tree. All right, we're gonna do a uh, remote repository. All right, we type in our URL. Let me move this so it's in a place we can see. All right, it's good to go, let's clone it. Okay, remember I'm on the work computer. Waiting for the files to clone. Okay, successfully cloned the repo. 
Now if we go in here, you'll see we just have the juicer plugin and our source files. So now what we can do is we can open this. Um, all of this stuff is set up. Oops, no, we don't want to update. Um, our modules are already set up. Now you may have to adjust your modules based on where they exist on your one, uh, on your the computer you're currently working on. But that's, you know, easy to do. So then all we have to do is just uh, save project and open an IDE. All right, it just made the builds folder, made the juice library code folder. Um, but that stuff, um, file status. You can see there's nothing here that is uh, waiting to be changed. So this is really beneficial if um, the next thing, say you wanted to add like a, um, you know, add some new stuff. Like I'm gonna, I'm just gonna make something called widget like that. Like say I have just a generic widget, All right? Okay. Now if I resave and reopen, Let's reload all. All right, now under my cool plugin, we can see that I've got my new widget source files. All right, so now if I go here and this updates, there are two new source files that we can commit. So now if I add, commit these, stage them all, they're all gonna be added. All right, now we can say added uh, widget source code. All right, push immediately to the remote server. All right, whenever I'm committing it to the remote server, I am pushing it to uh, the Bitbucket or GitHub or GitLab location. All right, we're just waiting for this to finish, uh, pushing those changes. All right, all done. Okay, close that. Now, um, let's pretend I'm on my home computer um, and we'll pull these changes real quick. All right, let me demonstrate that. Okay, so I'm here in Xcode on uh, OS X just to kind of show off what I'm, um, uh, what I was talking about. Um, so, you know, I added my widget I did some, you know, it's just going to do a little bit of painting. It's going to just fill whatever bounds it's given. It's just going to draw it totally blue. Um, and then in the main content component, uh, I've got just a widget as a chi as like a child component. Um, it's a, it's just a, uh, just a member variable. It gets added. This is all the work that I did when I was at the job. All right. All right. And now I want to work on this when I get home. So when, this is currently what it looks like at the office. This is like the state of the application, you know, super simple, but I did some work. Um, the M's here mean it's uncommitted. So they've been, these files have been modified. Uh, so let's just, you know, let's commit them real quick. Here's, um, here's, you know, the history so far added widget source code. Um, all right. So let's do a commit. Um, you can see that, um, Again, if I go to uh, Finder and I just pull up this window right here, you can see that under Juice Library Code, there's all these files that every time we save ProJuicer, they get modified. And then in Builds, there's this, uh, there's these things, there's this, this is the actual binary. Under uh, this thing, uh, Visual Studio, there's all of these files. And then when you actually compile it, it makes a bunch of other files. And that's stuff you just don't want stored in the repository. All right, so here I'll just make a little um, basic implementation of widget. All right, and we're gonna push it to our remote Bitbucket server. All right, just like this, okay. Uh, I have to enter my password. Um, all right, awesome. Basic implementation of widget. We can see all the changes that we made there. All right, so now, let me switch back to Windows. This is as though I was, I finished my work at the office and I'm gonna go home and work on this some more. All right. So now uh, my cool plugin is going on. Um, we can check out the remotes. If you go to check out the master branch, it's gonna, 
um, refresh this stuff. What we have to do is we have to pull, or oh, I'm sorry, we need to uh, fetch. Which this is going to tell us what's going on and if anything has changed. All right. So now we see that there's one pull request. It says that um, our current, our origin master is one ahead of where we currently are. So if we do pull, um, let me just pull this up just so we can see it. Um, if we do pull, right, we we're telling we want to pull it from the uh, the origin. So you know, in case you have multiple uh, remotes, like say you had uh, the project hosted on one server, and then you had another repository that was a backup of it, um, you could pull it from, you know, those would appear here as different remotes. And then say you had multiple branches, you could say, you know, I'm pulling it from the master branch, or I'm pulling it from this, you know, widget branch, which is documenting uh, the development of the widget, and it will eventually get merged back into the master branch. All right, so we're just going to pull it from master right here. Like this. It's going to download these files. It's going to update any changes that happened to them. All right, so we can see that there were two changes to main component. There were three changes and a deletion to uh, main component.h. Uh, widget had five lines added. Uh, widget or widget.cpp had five lines. Widget.h had seven lines, and then the juicer file itself had. Um, a lot of stuff added and a lot of stuff deleted. All right. So we close that. We close this. Okay. We go to the juicer file and it says it's been reloaded or it's been modified. Okay. We reload and you'll notice that we have our Xcode uh, version here. Um, we also have in these, uh, we now have the paths. This was, you know, pulled from the, uh, the updates that we did on our other computer. Um, so now if we save and open you'll see that these files they get um, revised all right, there's my paint method here's the blue thing where it draws all blue um, let's actually run this this is probably going to take a really long time because it's the first time running it and this will be a good chance to see the uh, our builds visual studio we can see all of the all of the stuff that gets generated all of these uh well, lucky for us, we don't have too many of these files. There's our exe file. That's good. And there's our uh, little plugin. All right, so. We're working on it at home, okay. All right, well, we, let's change it. Say we want this to be a different color. We don't want it to be blue. We want it to be uh, green. Whoop, let's make it green like that. All right, okay. Save. Um, we don't need to run it because there's no read. You know, say we already, you know, figured out what we wanted to do. We wanted to draw a line of text, uh, g dot set color colors black g dot draw single line text um, the letter X all right we're just gonna draw it in the middle um, all right we got a nice X right in the middle of the, of the widget let's run that right, we've got a nice little X all right cool all right. So now I don't really know how to use the uh, source control in here in um, this thing right here. I don't really know how to use this yet. So that's why I'm using source tree. It's just nice and easy. All right. So source tree, if I click on working copies, it's going to show the change right here. Okay. We want to stage it. And then we want to... Uh, Say uh, changed color and added text. Added a uh, X to a widget like that, All right? Okay, we're gonna commit that. It's gonna show up on the remote machine. 
All right now, if we go over to our remote uh, machine, I'm over here. Uh, let me pull up the project. Okay, we're gonna do it this way. Here's my cool plugin. All right, save and open in IDE. If I do pull, loading remote changes. All right, here's our here's our updated uh, here's our little source source file update where we draw the X and then we run it. And now our change shows up on our other computer. So, you know, it's a pretty, uh, the workflow takes, you know, just a couple tries to kind of get it under, um, kind of get it under your fingers and understand the process. But the most important thing is when you first start, you want to make sure that you uh, make your repo first on, um, on uh, the website. Then you want to, um, when it's blank, you want to have your git ignore file that you create. That, um tells Git to ignore the builds folder and ignores the juice library codes folder uh, because those are gonna be recreated every time uh, you save your project in ProJuice or like when you add files or when you uh, recompile or um, you know build it for a new system. And, you, and then you wanna just add your source folder and your juicer file uh, to the repository. So that way when you actually download it, uh, from the, when you clone the repository, you're only getting the bare minimum things that you need to actually build the project. You're not getting all this extra garbage that um, gets included by accident a lot of the time. All right, uh, so there's you know a, a relatively quick tutorial kind of walkthrough about how to uh, set up your Juice projects with uh, GitHub or Bitbucket or one of these other repositories, so that way. Um, when you're trying to work between different computers and also um, uh, just save your work up in, uh, in a server, um, there's a pretty easy way to do it. And I showed how to do it on both OS X and on Windows. Um, the initial setup was done on OS X um, and the actual initial project creation was done on Windows just to kind of give a vibe for uh, the way you can kind of work with the two systems. All right, hope you dug that. Hope that's helpful. Uh, good luck with your projects and um, I'll see you in the next video.